Hello, fabulous entrepreneur. It's Tash Corbin here and welcome to another episode of the Heart Centered Business Podcast. This is episode number 305, which means you can find all the relevant links and show notes for today's episode over at tashcorbin.com forward slash 305. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you how to set goals for your business and give you some step-by-step processes to follow to ensure that when it comes to goal setting, you're maximizing the role of that goal in helping you to achieve bigger and bigger results. So if that is something you would like to do, you want to up your game when it comes to goal setting, then this is going to be such a powerful episode. Let's dive on in. I'm Tash Corbin, and this is the Heart Centered Business Podcast. Okay, so when it comes to goal setting, I find most people fall into one of two camps. Number one is the, I love setting goals. I find goals so powerful, so focusing, so effective. So I love setting goals or I don't like setting goals. They make me feel yucky. And I would rather just see what comes. I'll just rather see what happens. Now, I totally understand why someone might fall into the second camp. And particularly if you've had experiences where setting goals feels uncomfortable, it was embarrassing when you didn't achieve a goal, or it felt really upsetting when you didn't get anywhere near accomplishing the goal that you set for yourself, I can understand why there's so much resistance around setting goals. However, I also know that overcoming that resistance is the exact mindset breakthrough that takes a lot of people from I don't like setting goals. I'll just see what happens and I'll, I'll let it, I'll let the universe decide what I'm allowed into. I am actually able to attract and keep more of what I want when I set and stay focused on my goals. So it creates this big shift. And the reason why we resist setting goals in the first place for most people is the very resistance that is stopping you from achieving big leaps in your business and your results as well. So, uh, you know, there's lots of sayings around goal setting. You know, when you write it something down, you make it closer to reality. I talk about a goal shared is a goal magnified. But in order for those things to work and for, you know, when you write down your goal twice a day, you're more likely to achieve it. Now, in order for those things to work, you've got to overcome the resistance to setting goals in the first place. And the way that you set your goal can also have a big impact on your level of excitement, the energetic power that that goal creates for you, and also your belief in your ability to achieve it. So the process of goal setting can be just as important as the goal itself. Let's dive into my five tips for setting goals. And in that, my five-step process, and in that, I'm also going to share with you my number one bonus that makes goal setting like 10 times more powerful. So number one, get all of your goals down. So one of the things that I know can overwhelm people is that they've got this in, I want to have this income goal for the next week and I want to have this income goal for the next month and I want to achieve this goal for the quarter and this goal for the year and in five years time I want to be earning this much per year right we've got all of these goals and sometimes carrying all of those goals around in our brain can actually uh, confuse us and defuse the power of the individual goals. So when it comes to goal setting, the first thing I would encourage you to do is get all of the goals down. So you might have some goals around income, goals around projects that you want to do, launches, the number of clients you have, being awarded for something, being selected as a speaker for something. You know, there's a bunch of different goals that we have and that might be rolling around in your brain. You might have business goals, health and well-being goals, goals around the time that you give to your business, the goals around reducing your expenses, right? You might have goals around spending time with family, going to the movies every week. That's a goal of mine. So, you know, I want you to get all of your goals down. I love setting a timer. You've probably heard me say this in podcasts before I love setting a timer and you know allowing myself 
the freedom and that that time and space to write down all of the goals uh, that I can get down. So you might set a timer for maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You think, God, that's far too long. I don't have that many goals. But when you've got to use up the space, all of a sudden, more and more of these goals come out. You don't even realize you've had that like as a subconscious goal for a little while. So I want you to set yourself a timer and just get it all down. Now, you might want to pause this podcast and do this straight away or set aside some time to do this later. So either way, set aside some time or do it now and then come back and we'll talk about number two. Number two, we're going to separate goal results from goal actions. There's a difference between I want to have a $10,000 a month and I want to record four podcast episodes. You have direct control over an action you have indirect control over a result. So I want you to separate in those goals you might have two categories of this is a result, I don't have direct control over this, this is an action. So you might have a goal of pitch myself to be on 20 podcasts, that's an action. Be uh, selected to be a guest on 20 podcasts is a result. You don't have control over how many people select you to be on their podcast. You have control over the action that most likely will lead to that result, which is pitching. So Uh, separating your goal results and your actions will help you to get clarity on, you know, and and just be clear on what do I actually have control over here and what do I have influence over. Now, when it comes to setting goals and focusing on those goals for your business, when it comes to the actions, the goal actions, I deal with those separately and I actually deal with those in my planning rather than as a goal setting exercise. I'm also a big fan of big goal, small list. This is something we talk about in the planning posse for people who do the Heart Center Business Planner with me throughout the year. Um, And this is our mantra for the year, big goals, small list. And when I say small list, I mean small list of actions. For most of your goals, there would be three or four very powerful actions that would make that goal most likely to be achieved. And yet, when we set our actions for and and create our plans, we are making lists of 45, 50 things that we need to do in order to achieve that goal. And the reasons why we do that for each person, you know, it's unique and it's individual, but the big themes are well, I don't actually believe I can get there. So I'm going to need to work really hard to get there. And I'm going to have to do extra, extra, extra work just in case the three main things don't work. So I don't believe in my core strategy uh, or that I've got the skills and capacity to get there with just doing the key things. Um, There may be some um, blocks or barriers around a belief that I have to work hard in order to earn it. Right. So those two things are related, but they're slightly different. Uh, And then the third one is that, um, you know, that sense of um, this is what I see others doing. And so therefore I need to emulate it. It's like everyone else is the expert. I'm not the expert. So that sort of um, handing over the decision making to someone else and just doing what everyone else seems to be doing online. Now, no, no one else online is doing all the things that you think that you need to do, by the way. Usually we're like, well, we pluck this from this person, this from this person. And what we don't recognize is, well, that person, they've got that as their key strategy. That person, they've got that as their key strategy. That person, they've got that as their key strategy. And you think, Well, I need to have all three as my key strategy, but that's not how it works. You need to see the one key strategy through to fruition, nail it and get it scaled up as effectively as possible. So separate your goal results from your goal actions, set your actions aside for your planning and focus on the results as the key goal, the key goals that you want to focus on. So that's tip number two, separate goal results from actions. Results are where we set our goals. Actions are the plans to achieve those goals. Number three, get specific and focused about where your priorities lie. So one of the reasons why we can take away the power of our goals is that we have a bunch of conflicting priorities, right? I've got a goal that I want to, you know, be able to run 5Ks in a minute faster, 
But I've also got this goal of I want to make $10,000 this month in my business. And I've also got this goal of I want to work less than 20 hours. And I've also got this goal of this and I've got this goal of that. And a confused mind will say no. So if your mind is confused by your goals and they seem to be in conflict with each other, then you will likely default to inaction or busy work that doesn't get you anywhere on anything. So rather than creating that confusion, narrow down what is most important. So for example, in my quarterly planning process, I have three goals, my income, my uh, list growth, and my input, as in the time that I invest in this, right? So for my business quarterly plan, I have three key goals, my income goal, my list size goal, and the number of hours I'm committing to my business. That's a goal as well. Now, the number of hours, I do have direct control over that, but there's a Uh, disconnect sometimes with what I intend to invest in my business and what I end up investing in my business. So I like to keep track of that one as a very high priority goal for me. So I might also have goals of like, I want 20 people to join my takeoff program, but that will contribute to my income goal. So my income goal is like my bigger goal, right? When I first started my business, I didn't focus on my income goal as my number one priority for several months. I focused instead on paying customers. So I didn't care how much they paid me. I just wanted to work with five paying clients every single week. And I knew that that was far more powerful for where I was at in my business and the growth and the momentum I wanted to create than some out of my hands, far too hard to work out how I would get their income goal of I want to have a $5,000 a month. I didn't actually care about having a $5,000 a month at that point in time. Yes, it would be lovely. But if I had to choose between having 20 paying clients for the month or $5,000, I would choose 20 paying clients because that $5,000 could come from two VIP sales of two and a half grand. But does that actually make me feel like my business is creating this amazing snowball of momentum and it's going to get you know, big results really quickly and I'm going to be able to scale this up? No, it wasn't actually as critical. And so my priority was paying clients instead. And there are a lot of times in business where your priority may not be the income goal. It may actually be a number of clients goal. Your, there might be times where a list growth goal is more important to you. There might be times where a followers on social media goal is more important to you. There might be times where a lead conversation, you know, I, I'm going to have conversations with 20 leads this month is far more important and powerful to you than I'm going to get an extra hundred people on my mailing list. So There's no right set of goals, but what you need to do is really get clear on what is the priority for you and focus it down to those key goals. And I would say three key goals for your business is the max uh, when it comes to like, what is the priority? And similarly, um, there are times where my income goal is more important at the yearly level or the, my income goal is more important at the short-term level. So sometimes my when I'm writing down my income goal, it's a goal for a launch. So I'm launching the takeoff program and I want it to be a $75,000 launch of the takeoff program. So that is the goal I am focused on and I'm prioritizing. Yes, I have a monthly income goal. Yes, I have a goal of my income for the year. But right now, My number one focus is the goal achievement of this launch. There are times where it's not necessarily about an individual launch. It's about a month. So this month, my income goal is $55,555. And that is the thing that I'm focused on. So when it comes to me really focusing on writing down, you know, reminding myself of my goals, I know what the goal is I'm focused on right now. I'm about to start my 100 days of progress art program. It starts on the 1st of June. And for that period from the 1st of June until the 8th or 9th of September, I can't remember which is the 100 days. I think it's the 9th of September. For that 100 days, uh, I will be focused on one goal for the entire 100 days. So my goal that I write down and track towards every day will be the goal for the 100 days. 
And so, you know, there's power in deciding what is the goal, even if you've got, you know, in- income is number one and income is the goal I'm focused on, which income goal is the one that you're focused on? And instead of writing down, I want $10,000 this month and a $20,000 launch and $120,000 a year and, right, and just confusing yourself, confused mind says no, what is the goal that is most powerful and prior- the priority for you to focus on right now? So get very specific and prioritize. Now, I also do recommend that um, when you're setting goals as a lifestyle business owner, I also have goals that I set around my health and well-being, you know, prioritizing time with my family, you know, all those sorts of things. But again, I still get very focused on those as well. So in my quarterly plan, as I said, my business, I have three key goals for my business. I also set three goals around inputs and lifestyle. So lifestyle goals to myself, because I find I can't separate them. Yeah. It's all well and good for me to say that my business is my business and my life is my life. But as a, the, as a business owner and as a lifestyle business owner, those things are so incorporated and um, intrinsic with each other that I actually have them all in the one plan. So I will have What are my lifestyle goals as well? So I I have those categorized. So get specific, focus, prioritize. Number four, stretch your goal just outside of what feels comfortable. And I know that there are different personality types out there. Some people like are really motivated by a giant, you know, out there audacious goal. Some people are more motivated by ticking off the little steps along the way, tiny little milestone goals. But regardless of which you fall into, there is power of stretching just a little side outside that comfort zone. So um, allowing yourself to tune into what makes that little stretch that little bit uncomfortable for you. There's, There's power in noticing your thoughts around the stretch. There's power in paying attention to what's the belief that pops up that says, well, you're allowed $10,000, but $11,000, that's far too much, right? What makes that so different when it's such a nominal little um, stretch? So I do like to, when it comes to goal setting, ensure that I'm giving myself a little bit of a stretch when it comes to the goals that I'm setting for myself. And then number five, which isn't necessarily around the setting the goal itself, but it starts the minute you set the goal, is pay attention to the pop-up thoughts and beliefs that come from even just writing down that goal. When you think about achieving that goal, what is the first thing that your inner mentor slash critic might say to you? What is the first pop-up thought that comes to mind? So, um, you know, it might be when you set a little stretch of an income goal, the pop-up thought is, I'll be far too busy. That's going to make me too busy. I don't want that. Maybe this, you set a goal of growing your list by a thousand people in the next 90 days. And um, it makes, it brings up some things about being seen a oh, thousand people. I don't know if that feels very comfortable <sighs> or it might be that you set a goal of bringing a thousand people in and your first pop-up thought is, There's no way I can find a thousand people. There's no way there's a thousand people interested in my work. Now, the power of noticing that thought is not to just squash it and go, ah, that doesn't belong here. Let it go. The power is in being curious about why that thought has popped up and whether deciding whether you want to keep it or not. It's not just a matter of push it down and hope it doesn't pop up again. It's a matter of deciding, okay, oh, interesting, right? I always look at pop-up thoughts and beliefs as with curiosity. Oh, that's interesting. Where did that come from? Why do I feel that way? What could have been the cause of that belief? Is that a belief or thought that I'd like to keep or is it one that I would like to let go of? And if I decide that it's something that I want to let go of, rather than just saying, okay, I've let it go and believing that it will never pop up again, I like to, um, my EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique um, mentor, practitioner, the fabulous Claire Kerslake, I'll link to her in the show notes. So she explained it to me once as though like the belief is the tabletop, right? It popped up, the belief is the tabletop, but it's got four legs holding it up. 
Those four legs could be childhood experiences, um, past failures or embarrassments, uh, family mantras and programming. Uh, it could be, you know, your inner child trying to keep you safe from something. Like there's a bunch of sources of those legs beyond, uh, underneath that tabletop. Now you can tell yourself, I'm just going to get rid of the tabletop, but actually the most powerful way to clear that and get it out of the way is for you to break the legs, right? Like actually understand what the legs are and release those. Um, and so for me, that's why I am such a fan of paying attention to those pop-up thoughts, paying attention to that mindset. I understand that sometimes in the moment, uh, a thought will come up and it's like, oh, I have to work hard for that. And it's like, no, I don't want that. Go away. You know, I think in hypnosis, they use delete, like delete, delete, delete. I totally understand that in the moment, like just deciding that you don't want that thought taking control right now is, is, you know, valid. It's a valid approach. However, if it keeps coming up, it's got some legs. And would you like to just continue seeing the tabletop and telling it to go away? Or would you like to actually get rid of it? And so I think that's where that combination of, um, you know, training your brain and positive affirmations and powerful um, rewiring processes can be really helpful. And there's a space for uncovering and clearing and doing the deeper work as well. So uh, that's tip number five is pay attention to those pop-up beliefs, those pop-up thoughts with curiosity. And make a decision. Is that a thought I want to keep or is it that one that I want to let go of? And am I going to just try and wipe it away? Or is it time for me to actually understand what the legs are that are holding this belief up? Now, my extra tip for you in achieving that goal. So if you're someone who now is like, right, I'm going to set some goals. I've got some steps to set those goals, but I'm worried that I'm not going to actually achieve those goals. And I'm... Um, I doubt my ability to achieve those goals. There's lots of pop-up thoughts coming and I can't seem to make sense of them. My number one tip for you is track your progress daily, daily. Track your progress towards those goals daily. Number one, it keeps it front of mind. Number two, it creates time and space every day to notice your pop-up thoughts. Number three, it allows you to show gratitude for and appreciate every little piece that comes on the way to achieving that goal and what we focus on expands. So it creates this amazing pro process of snowballing the littlest result. So um, if you are you know, working towards an income goal and you find a dollar on the street and you track that dollar and show appreciation to it, you're snowballing that dollar into more money. Um, and uh, also it's allowing you to um, create that consistency, that consistency of this is just how we do it. Now, one of the biggest reasons why people decide that they don't want to track their income in particular every day is that it makes them sad or it, it feels uncomfortable. I don't like tracking a zero every day. It makes me feel gross. It makes me feel yucky. That feeling already exists in you. So the decision to not track your income because, well, there's no point, there's no money there is already playing with your emotions at the subconscious level and it's already snowballing itself as a belief. I don't make money every day. I can't make money every day. I don't make a lot of money. There's no money there. There's no money coming in, right? Is that a belief, a snowball of belief that you want to keep or is it one that you want to get rid of? If you want to get rid of that snowball of belief, your job is to track every $0 day. That's how you uncover it and that's how you clear it. That's how we get rid of the table legs. So that is my extra bonus tip for you is to track your income every single day. Track your progress towards your goals every single day. And uh, if you would like to access my free resource on showing you how to do that, I have a beautiful progress art free resource for you. Progress art is the step-by-step -step process that I use to track every single day. Now, it doesn't need, you don't need to love coloring in. You don't need to be artistic and you don't need to think art is a powerful transformative process in order for progress art to work for you. What progress art does is it magnifies the consistency which, with which you track every single day. It's a consistency builder. So I'd love for you to come and check that out. I'll pop the link with the show notes of today's episode over at tashcorbin.com forward slash 305. And in that free resource, I give you some artworks that you can use to track towards your goals. 
plus a step-by-step -step guide on setting and, and tracking your way to your goals and a tracking sheet. So if you go and uh, grab that at tashcorbin.com forward slash 305, that will help you not only get good and practice at setting goals, but also tracking your way to achieving them. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the Heart Centered Business Podcast. Until next time, I cannot wait to see you shine. Big love from me and bye for now. Would you like more tips, tools, and resources to help you grow your heart-centered business? Head to tashcorbin.com today.